I'm not your average girl. Hey, not your average girl. Hey, I'm not your average girl. What does your job as a TV presenter entail? So I interview people and that's both on TV and on radio. Often it's people that haven't spoken on TV or radio before at all. And so it's about finding out who they are, introducing them to an audience and helping them to best tell their story. Speaking to experts and people who are professionals in their field and getting their take on a subject which is topical. And I would say finally, I'll often go behind the scenes, whether it's at events, so it might be sports events or music events, and just bringing a different dimension to an audience and, and finding and showing things which perhaps they won't have got to see before. Why did you decide to become involved in TV presenting? I feel like presenting chose me, you know, as a child, when I was at school, I was always the person at the front of the class speaking, doing the presentations, whatever was required. I had no qualms about that. Um, my mum also put me into public speaking competitions as well. So it was just the thing that I did for enjoyment. I mean, I went as far as reading teletext, which was that text service, news service on the TV. And I would read that like it was my auto cue. I do have a special interest in human interest stories. I think finding out about people and what makes them tick, what's brought them to where they are. When did you make a start in your career? So I started out in media just over 10 years ago. Prior to that I'd worked in the charity sector and I'd worked in recruitment. I saved up some money from being a recruitment consultant to be able to support myself so that I could take whatever roles I was able to get and yeah it was a production assistant. Working in that capacity I worked with a lot of presenters so I was like a sponge, I was taking in as much as I could. Eventually I started working on online productions, I would work on community radio stations and I would work in a more kind of amateur capacity and still I started getting a showreel and a demo together. About three or four years in I got an opportunity which then kind of led to a number of other opportunities. In the last couple of years, I actually went back into education and trained as a journalist. I wanted to ensure that if I was going to be working in a reporter capacity, I genuinely knew and I felt confident that I knew all of the right questions to ask and the, the do's and the don'ts. What top three skills do you need to become a TV presenter? You need to be able to think on your feet because you might be doing an interview that you've prepped for really well and then your guest will say something completely off script you weren't expecting, you can't ignore it, you need to sometimes go with it, elaborate on it and find out more. That might be where your exclusive is. You need to be good at researching because if you're good at researching and you know your subject then that's going to help with your communication. So communication and research are hand in hand. You can be given questions, you can be given a script, but I think people will really enjoy watching you and enjoy your work if you're authentic and you've been able to make something your own and take an idea and really absorb it and then communicate it back in a way that is from your heart, from your mind. Who helped you? I've got to shout out the very first opportunity I got which was shadowing for Matchbox TV on the T4 movie specials. I became a production assistant. That was such a good entry point into media. I have to mention Westminster Uni. It was students looking for a presenter. They put something out on a casting website. And because I then got that role and it was a student production, but I started getting showreel material together because I ended up doing a few uh, roles for them. Working on community radio. So I worked on Brent East Radio and the people there, they just, they had a real belief in me. What's Up TV, Licklemore Productions, who's behind that, they are a fantastic production company. They really believe in what they're doing, they believe in their talent. What's been one of your best career highlights or achievements so far? Becoming a one show reporter and presenting on BBC One because, you know, that's something which I had wanted to do for a long time. Another career highlight was being one of the presenters for the inaugural 100 uh, tournament for Sky Sports Cricket. To be part of such a significant lineup, I mean working alongside people like Freddie Flintoff for example, that was really great. Not only because of the platform and what it was, but I think largely because of what the end game was, which was inclusion and ensuring that people felt included in a sport which 
perhaps hadn't really achieved that for many people before. So being part of something like that for the first year that it was on uh, was really significant. What's been one of your biggest learning curves during your career so far? And what did you learn from this? You really need to have a thick skin and learning that early on is going to give you the tenacity you need to keep it moving, keep going and keep believing in yourself. Because if you allow, um, you know, the naysayers or the negative comments or the knockbacks to get in your way, then you're not going to get very far. And also a healthy dose of patience with yourself and with your journey, knowing that, you know, these little incremental steps that you're taking, eventually you'll be a lot further along the way than you even realise. So be patient with your journey and, uh, and just keep learning. What's your ultimate career goal? What I would love is to be in the room when a format is being formulated and I'm in the room because that format is for me to present because my presenting style and what I bring to the table is exactly what they're looking for. And this will be on a mainstream TV, it's a recurring series, I'm the lead presenter, there's a team of us and uh, we're doing great things and bringing important stories to, to an audience of masses. What advice do you have for young women who aspire to get into TV? don't underrate practicing how to do something so whether it's getting your camera out getting a microphone out and having an idea that you want to communicate and doing it on film or on mic it's going to really help you to then listen back watch back what are you doing well what do you need to work on because what you want to do is put yourself in a position so that when an opportunity arises you are ready. So let, let's scratch out this idea that practice makes perfect because perfect is sometimes a bit dull, quite frankly, but practice makes you ready. And you just want to be in a position that should the opportunity strike, you are ready for it. Thank you so much for joining me in today's Career Corner, Jacqueline. It's been amazing hearing from you. TC, thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. And uh, of course, don't forget that you can listen to me each and every Wednesday night on BBC Radio London between 8 pm and 10 pm. Again, thank you for having me in your career corner. Bye. I'm not your average girl. Hey, not your average girl. Hey, I'm not your average girl.